Hey everyone, welcome back to the fish room. So I got a different type of video for you today. I kind of want to just get really honest with you guys. I want to get candid here for a minute because I want to talk today about some of the greatest mistakes I've made here in the fish room. Uh, I've made some decisions and done some things that have uh, resulted in not great uh, results. <laughs> um, and you know, maybe you can uh, commiserate with me to an extent if you've had similar issues. Uh, but hopefully, and more importantly, hopefully you can maybe learn from my own mistakes. Um, if you're going to do make any decisions like these, you can see how it has not worked out well for me. Now, I want to start off by saying I am very happy with how the fish room has come together. Uh, for any new visitors to the channel, if this is your first time uh, joining us here, just this little quick walk around hopefully gives you an idea of what you're stepping into. We're a little crazy here, right? <laughs> uh, we're crazy about fish. But even though I'm happy with how the fish room has come together as a whole, it's not without its flaws. So today, what I want to do is tell you guys about my three greatest regrets here in the fish room. To start off the list of Rift Waters regrets, we're coming over here to the 650 gallon Monster Aquarium. So first, let me give you some background on this tank. This is a DIY build. So this is a plywood aquarium uh, with a glass viewing panel. And this tank is about nine feet long, a little over four feet front to back, about, you know, a little under three feet tall. And it's home to some awesome fish. You know, our 34 inch Fire Eel Samson. Uh, you know, we've got a couple albino giant garami, and just a bunch of other really cool fish. Uh, you know, the lighting's not the best right now. Uh, they're, the fish are in some shade. Uh, Sam, uh, Bert's being a jerk. Uh, don't worry, they never actually hurt each other. But back to the, the regret, right? So this is a DIY build, and like I said, this is a glass panel. And this is, because this is such a big tank, most notably because it's tall, this glass needed to be pretty darn thick. And that is the crux of the problem. You see, the thicker glass you go, uh, the greener it gets. Uh, I don't know if you can, this comes through very well in video, uh, but in person, I, I can't see anything else, right? Like I'm fixating on the problem that this has a very green tint to it. So look at this. You can kind of notice that it's a little greenish compared to this glass over here for the 600 gallon African cichlid aquarium. And the lighting's a little better, sure, there, but that is mostly clear, whereas this has some green tint to it. The real issue is that the glass is thick. Um, and my regret is that I went with cheap glass, uh, regular glass. I could have splurged for low iron glass. Low iron glass is a lot more expensive, but it is much clearer because the iron content in the glass is what actually makes it, it adds this green hue to it. So that is my regret. And if anyone out there is building a plywood aquarium, I highly recommend that you don't build a tank if you cannot afford the low iron glass. If you, if you have to go three quarter inch, uh, you need to get low iron glass. 100% strong recommendation. Uh, now, if you're building something less than three quarter inch, I do find that half inch glass, it's not that bad. So you can go for a regular glass in those scenarios. Um, I love this tank, it's great. But every time I look at it, I'm just gonna be honest, I see green. And it, it's just like this little nagging thing in the back of my head, uh, a mistake I made. And it's, it's permanent, right? I can't change that. This tank is what it is. Um, and it's been this way for years now. And it's always gonna be this way. And it's always just kind of a, a little reminder. All right, regret number two. This is a problem that I caused myself uh, with poor maintenance uh, routines. And, and I'm gonna tell you this so that hopefully you can avoid it yourself. Uh, some quick background. This is a 200 gallon cube tank. It's three feet by three feet by three feet. And we got some really nice Malawi and cichlids in here, mostly peacocks. This is mainly a grow out tank right now. But what's the problem? Can you see all these scratches on this glass? There are a lot of them and they're long too. It's not very noticeable when you step back, especially on camera, but when you're in person especially, and if you get at the right angle, this tank, at least this side of the glass, is covered in scratches. And this is actually embarrassing for me to show you guys, 
because I'm really embarrassed by what caused this. So I used to be, I'm not gonna say lazier with my maintenance, my tank cleaning, because um, I don't think it's gonna be fair to say lazy for anyone else who uses this, this tool still. But I used to use one of those magnetic cleaners. And maybe for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, there's these cleaners, they're like scrubbing pads, and some of them even have razor blades. There's two pieces, one goes on the inside of the tank, and then one goes on the outside of the tank, and it's a magnet. So they stick together between the, through the glass, and on the outside of the tank, you kind of move this up and down, and the other piece on the inside goes and scrubs. And it's a way to kind of clean your tank without getting your hands wet. And it also helps for tall tanks like this. But if you ever get any sand on the inside of those scrubbers, well, this is what happens. So, they're, they're, they're a cool tool, they're a great tool. I'm not trying to put them down or put down anyone who uses them, but you have to be so careful. This is my regret. Uh, this is number two here. Not being careful with one of those magnetic scrapers, and I've I absolutely destroyed this glass. You know what, you know what kills me, I'll tell you. This tank wasn't set up for more than a few weeks before these happened. Ah, breaks my heart. All right, for our last regret, or number three in our list of greatest regrets here, we're coming over to the 280 gallon acrylic aquarium. Uh, now, first off, I'll say yes, this tank is a little empty right now. We only have a few fish in here. Uh, this is uh, Tychochromus grandidieri. It's a cichlid from Madagascar. They're pretty cool. Uh, he's not uh, showing much color right now. So this tank is used. This is a, an acrylic aquarium that I bought used from uh, another person. And this was actually the first acrylic aquarium I've ever owned. So just honestly, I didn't have any experience in acrylic tanks at the time. I had no idea what to look for. Uh, I went in person and checked it out and I didn't know, you know, the flaws in acrylic tanks to look for to know if you're not getting a good one. And I'll just tell you, I did not get a good one. And I spent a lot of money on this thing. Why is it not good? The first problem is, this is made with half inch thick acrylic. This is, it's way too thin acrylic for a tank this size, or for a tank this tall. Um, it actually bows. This tank um, bows out a little bit. Um, now beyond that, it's also not uh, fabricated very well. Look at these seams. These, are terrible seams in an acrylic build. Absolutely horrendous. I mean, oh my goodness. And it actually leaked. After I had it filled for a couple weeks, it started leaking down here in this corner just from bad seam work. And I actually had to like, I was so new to acrylic at the time. This is such a sloppy repair job, but I just um, adhered another piece of scrap acrylic inside the corner and it fixed it, but it's terrible looking. Um, but beyond that, not only did this tank leak, it actually tore open. In the back, let's see here, there's this giant block here of acrylic because someone, the previous owner, cut, cut through the Euro bracing. I'm not joking. They cut through the Euro bracing entirely, clean through, in order to fit an airline tubing through. And eventually, that combined with how thin the acrylic is, this tank tore open. The lesson learned here, or my word of caution, is to be very careful when buying used aquariums. I, in fact, now have a personal rule to never buy used aquariums. But that's all I have for you today, guys. Those are three of my greatest regrets here in the fish room. Uh, hopefully that came off more as um, you know, friendly advice or suggestions, you know, rather than me just <laughs> complaining about bad decisions I've made. Um, I really just want to be honest, you know, and transparent. Uh, we all learn as we go, and you know, you learn the most when you mess up, right? Uh, failure teaches us way more than success ever could. So, um, but you can also learn from other people's mistakes. So I hope that's what happens here. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed uh, visiting the fish room again. I can't wait for you to come again next time.